So, you want to learn to play songs totally by ear. Well, my friend, you're in exactly the right place because today I'm giving away the secrets and I'm going to show you how it's done. Now, before we jump in, I respect your time. I'm going to keep this video very concise and impactful and all that stuff. But the one thing I want to say before we get started is I want you to make a commitment to stay through the entire video. Because I've come up with my own way of doing this and you're going to get information in this video that you won't find anywhere else. I've done research, I've looked at how other people teach this, I've even bought other people's courses, and nobody teaches this the exact same way that I do. Okay, step number one, the first thing that we want to learn is that music is a language. We're trying to learn the language of music. Now, compared to most other languages, it's actually really simple. English, for example, has 170,000 words in it. That's crazy. French has around 135,000 from what I looked up. Well, guess how many sounds the language of music has? It's not a thousand, it's not a hundred thousand, it's not even a hundred for my method. It's about 14. Roughly 14 sounds to do what we need to do and play songs by ear. So it is eons, not eons, that's not a good word, magnitudes easier to learn the language of music than to go and learn like say German or something, right? So I want to just encourage you that you can definitely do this understand that, and let's move on to the second step. Now step number two is we need to learn a little bit of music theory. And I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but stay with me here because we're just going to talk about the basics, like only what you need to know to play by ear. Now at its core level, and if you've watched my other videos you've seen me talk about this, songs are just melody plus chords. Any song is just some combination of melody notes with chords beneath it. So if we want to play by ear, what we have to do is hear the melody and then hear the chords and then we put them together. So that's my approach. We're going to train you on how to hear melody and then we're going to train you on how to hear the chords and then you put that together and you've got your song. All right, now let's talk about the music theory of our melodies. Now any melody you could ever want to play or sing, all it is is a pattern of notes from our scale. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, a scale is that sound that we're all already familiar with. Check this out. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. All right, so I said melodies are just certain combinations of these notes from the scale. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's not even use the whole scale. Let's just use do, re, mi. There's a ton of songs that are written with just do, re, mi, and then you put lyrics over them and you've got a song. So for example, I could do Journey. She's just a small town girl. I could do Closer by the Chainsmokers. Baby, pull me closer in the backseat of your rover. I could do Moana, the Disney song. There's a line where the sky meets the sea. So many songs just using those three notes. So then you can imagine if you learn the sound of all seven, you can play pretty much any song you want to play. It's really cool stuff. Now we're going to talk about how to train all this into our ears later on. But for now, just understand that melodies come from our scales. That's all I'm trying to show you. All right, so those first seven sounds that we're trying to learn for the language of music are just the seven melody notes we talked about. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Super easy. Now let's go over to the chord side of things. All right, I'm gonna blow your mind right out of the gate here and tell you this. Each of those melody notes we talked about, do, re, mi, and so on, each of those notes can be turned into a full-blown chord. So what do I mean by that? Well, instead of just playing Do as one single note, I can actually turn it into a full chord by using a chord shape like this. And there's more music theory behind chords, but for now, just look at this every other note kind of shape. That's what we're talking about. And so I turn Do from one single note into a full chord. I can do the same thing on Re. Here's Re as a note. Here's Re as a full chord. Now the only difference is, instead of saying Do, Re, Mi for the chords, we want to say one, two, three. So check this out. Do would be the one chord, because it's the first note of the scale. Re would be the two chord. Mi would be the three chord, four, five, six, seven, and so on, right? And those chords, one through seven, are the other seven sounds in our language of music. So we have seven melody notes we're trying to learn, and seven chords we're trying to learn, and we can play by ear. All right, so get excited, because now we're going to go to step three, which is training these melodies and training these chords. It's not enough to just know them. We have to actually work with them and build them into our ear a little bit. Now, in my opinion, the chord side of things is way cooler, and that's the part that really blows people's minds. So stick around for that. 
but we're gonna start with melody, just because it's a little more straightforward and people already have sort of a better grasp of melody, usually. And what we're gonna do is basically take a three-pronged approach to learning these melodies. So, let's talk about the first way to do it. The first way is to do what we call interval training. Okay, now what on earth do I mean when I say interval training? Well, an interval is just the spacing between two different notes on the piano. So think of it as measuring a distance. For example, one to two would be a second, one, two, three is a third, one, two, three, four is a fourth, and so on and so on. So what we need to do is train our ear to hear each of those intervals, okay? Now the way we do this is really simple. I'm gonna just sort of blast through it because I think you're gonna get the idea and then you can work on this on your own. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna sing Do to the next interval, back to Do. And I'm gonna do each one twice so you can listen the first time and then I want you to try to sing along the second time. I know it's sort of weird to sing to a YouTube video, but uh, I want you to do this at home, okay? So starting with Do, Re, Do, listen one time and then sing it the second time. Do, Re, Do, your turn. Do, Re, Do, now me. Do, Mi, Do, Do, Mi, Do, now Fa. Do, Fa, Do, your turn. Do, Fa, Do, then So. Do, So, Do, Do, So, Do, then La. Do, La, Do, Do, La, Do, then T. Do, T, Do, Do, T, Do, then Do, the octave. Do, 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 Do. Okay, so we went through that really fast, but I want you to go back at the piano and work through that until you really know each one. Then, this is super important, sing it without the piano and use the piano to check yourself. So watch this. Do, Re, that's good. Let's try so. Do, So, that's good. But now maybe I'll get it wrong. So let's say I'm going for like Fa. Do, Fa, oh, that's wrong. Fa, so I was singing Mi, but then I had to change it to Fa. And I messed up there on purpose to show you you're listening and you're correcting as you go. And the way you know you've got this step done is you want to be able to sing each of those intervals with no piano. Do, re, do, do, mi, do, and so on like that. Okay, step number two is the most important step here, and this is where I want you to spend the majority of your time. But basically, all it is, is you're going to do sequences of notes. Because real songs don't just do one interval, right? Or they don't just go in order like we did. They do certain chunks of the scale and certain melodies where lots of notes are woven together. So that's what I want you to do. Pick a few notes and then try to sing those notes. So for example, let's pick Do, Re, Mi. Can we sing that? Do, Re, Mi. Let's check it. Good. What about, say, Do, Mi, So? Maybe I pick those three and then I try to sing them. Do, Mi, So. Then I check it. Do, Mi, So. And uh, you could just keep going and messing around with this stuff. The more you do, the better you get. So, La, So, Fa, Mi, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Right? And you could go all the way up to the octave. Do, Do, Ti, La, So. And you can just mess around. And the more you do this, I know I already said this. I'm like hitting the tripod. I'm so amped up here. But the more you do it, the better you get. And then when you listen to a real song, you can start hearing those patterns. And what's so ridiculously cool is as you do this, you start to hear how many songs have the exact same DNA that do the same melodies. Because really, there's only so many combinations we can do of those seven notes. And let's take, for example, just Do, Re, Mi, So, okay? So many songs use that one pattern. Take Beyonce, for example. If I were a boy, take The Greatest Showman. Never enough. Take uh, a Christian song. I could sing of your love. So many songs use that Do, Re, Mi, So pattern. And there's other patterns out there too. And as you train this stuff, you're gonna learn how to hear them. And that brings us to our third and final method of training our melodies. And this is where a lot of people get into trouble because they try to start and end with this one element. And it's really dangerous if you don't know any of the other stuff. Or maybe not dangerous, but it's just not helpful. And that is guessing. There is a time and a place where you have to guess. You have to hear, okay, 
that's going up, I think, and that's going down, and maybe there's a repeated note, and I'm gonna sit down and just try to guess where it is on the piano. You have to be brave. You can learn everything you want in terms of ear training, but at the end of the day, it takes sitting down at the piano and trying to figure out that melody and putting the rubber to the road. Does that make sense? So think of it as you're trying to apply everything that we've learned, and the more you do it, the less guesswork there is, and the more you just know exactly where to go. So for example, when you first start doing this, it might be like 10%, you've kind of got your music theory, you've watched this video, you know what the intervals sound like, but maybe it's 90% guessing. As you go forward and you really start to internalize this stuff, maybe it's 50-50. And then later on, once you're at like a really good level, sort of where I am, maybe it's 95%, you know exactly what it's gonna be before you even sit down, and it's 5%, guessing like, oh, I'm not quite sure what the melody's doing there. That's only 5% of it. And now here's a really important point. We don't wanna just guess. We wanna guess within a scale. So you might be thinking, guessing within a scale, like, Corey, what are you talking about? Well, let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's say I've been working on this stuff, I've been training my ear like I just showed you, and I've gotten pretty decent. And let's say I wanna play Beauty and the Beast. And I'm listening to it and I'm hearing, Bittersweet and strange, finding you can change. And so if I've trained my ear, I know that's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. But the problem is, if I go to the piano and I try to start guessing, I'm probably not going to get it right. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, no, that's not right. Bittersweet and strange, no, okay, that's not it. So what I need to do is instead of just guessing, I need to guess within a certain scale. Bittersweet and strange, finding you can change. There we go. And I know that raises the question of, well, how did I make that scale? How did I know how to do that? I don't want to spend too much time on that right now because that's really easy and uh, tons of videos talk about that. It's like the first thing you learn in music theory. But I don't want to leave you hanging, so let me show you really quick sort of how to make the scale. Basically, we have half steps, which is one note to the next on the piano. And then we have whole steps, which are just two half steps, one, two. To make a scale, you're gonna put whole steps and half steps in this order. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that's basically it. That's the super quick explanation of how to make a scale. So if you're still confused about that, I'll leave a link to another one of my videos that's all about scales. And this is really important. We're going to come back to scales later on so I can show you how to find what scale a certain song is using, what key it's in. But for now, we're gonna keep on going. All right, now step four is my favorite step of the entire video here. We're gonna talk about chords and how to actually hear what chords are being used when. And what's really cool about this is the chords have specific sounds to each one that a lot of people can hear even without training, just right out of the gate. So let's go to the piano and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, let's talk more about how to hear these different chords. Now, the first one I want to cover is the one chord, right? I'm going to build a chord off that, and that's my one chord. Now, this one's really easy to hear because it makes the song sound what we call resolved. In other words, it makes the song sound like it's landed somewhere, like it could end, right? So, for example, if I play Happy Birthday, mm, that's not quite right. How about... No? Okay, let's try one more. There we go, that's the one chord. It makes the song sound like it's over. So think of your one chord that way, that's your home bass. Now let's keep going, and we're not just gonna go in order because far and away the most common chords are one, four, five, and six. Like 80% of what you're gonna hear in any genre, whether it be rock or pop, country, EDM, it's gonna be one, four, five, and six. And that's why I tell my students when you're trying to play by ear, Start with those chords before you try anything else, because it's probably one of those. So that said, we're gonna start with those chords. And the next one I wanna go to, we already did one. Let's talk about six. The six chord sounds very sad. So for most people, if I just sat down and played that six chord for you, they would not think that's a happy sound, right? It's very somber and uh, kind of depressing. So that's the sound of the six chord. Now let's hear what it sounds like if I go from one to six. So one, here's my starting point. Six is a little bit sad. Back to one, back to six. And that's, as simple as that is, that's a real chord progression. That's hallelujah. Mm, 
Now, let's talk about the five chord. The five chord is the polar opposite of the one chord because it's the most unresolved. It's the one we want to hear go somewhere else. We don't want it to just stop on five. So for example, if I do happy birthday again, no, that it's, it's just not right. Or if I try to end a scale there, you really want to hear it go back to one. And a ton of songs are just built around five and one, tension and release. So for example, here's the one chord, five, one, five. And then I could even do like Christmas songs, tons of Christmas songs are just one and five. Here's five, one, five, one. All right, I could just keep on going with tons of different songs that use those two chords, but I think you kind of get it. Now, let's talk about the four chord. The four chord is really, really nice. To me, it's got this peaceful sound to it, and it is somewhat resolved. You can land there, but it's not as resolved as the one chord. So a good example would be U2, they love going one to four. Uh, Coldplay, any kind of modern Christian music, there's a lot of that four chord. Let's hear it. Here's one, and then here's four. So it's got a nice, peaceful sound to it. Back to one. Next up, let's talk about the two chord. Now this one's a little bit harder to hear for some people, but I think of it as the bridge chord. It sort of jumps out and makes you think, oh, there was something a little bit different. That was interesting. And uh, you can kind of hear what I mean. Let's say I'm doing one, then I go to four, then I go to five. Now here's two, listen. It's like, oh, that was not what I expected. So the two chord has that element of sort of surprise to it. It sounds different, it jumps out at you. And the reason I think this chord is tough for some people is because it's sort of halfway in between light and dark. In some circumstances, it can sound happy. In other instances, it sounds kind of sad. So for example, uh, if I want it to sound happy, a lot of songs will go one to two to like something else here, I'll show you. So here's one, then two, then say six to four. So it really didn't sound that sad. But in a different context, maybe I'm starting on one again, then I go to four, then here's two, and then six. So there, I mean, the whole thing was slower, it was kind of somber, and you heard that two chord had a little more of a darker quality. So this one takes some time to really latch on to what it is with your ear. Now let's keep on going and let's talk about the three chord. This chord has this melancholy, beautiful, like hauntingly painful, beautiful sound to it, and it's sort of like the six chord, in that it has that sadder sound. There's a way to tell them apart. We'll get to that in a second, but let me just play it for you. Here's one, then three, one, then three. Now the difference between the three chord and the six chord, because they both sound sad, right? The six chord though has the root in it. In other words, it has do as part of the chord. So you could end a song there, but it's just gonna sound a little sad. And there's that six chord. Now on the other hand, the three chord, like we mentioned, is less stable. So if I try to end on that. Mm, no, you, you, you kind of want to hear it go somewhere else, right? So typically the three chord leads to somewhere else. For example, you might hear one to three to six. That's really common. Now you may have noticed we're not talking about the seven chord at all. And the reason for that is a pure seven chord isn't really used in modern music hardly ever, right? It's used in classical music and all that kind of stuff. But in modern music, typically what we'll have instead is the five chord. And if the songwriter really wants that seven as the bass note, they'll put that seven beneath the five chord. Okay, so really this is like a big five chord with that seven in the bass. And um, not to get too lost in the weeds, there's a reason for that, but basically the pure seventh chord is really, really dissonant, like right here. So typically you wouldn't really want that sound. And just to drive the point home, let's use the song Piano Man. 
So Billy Joel, he starts on the one chord, and then he goes down to seven as the bass note. But it's not a pure seven chord. Listen to how weird that would sound. Sing us a song. Oof. Not, not quite, right? Instead, what he does is what I just talked about. He uses the five chord, but then just puts that seven in the bass. Sing us a song. You're the piano man. Sounds so much better. So that pure seven chord is usually too dissonant to use in a modern genre of music. All right, now we know the sound of each of our chords. So, I know I hit you with a lot of information. It does take some time, it does take some practice. But if you ever feel overwhelmed, especially if you feel overwhelmed right now, just remember, one, four, five, and six. Those four chords are the huge majority of everything you're gonna need. So of course, all of this is a little bit subjective, which I'm not a huge fan of. I tend to be very concrete, especially for a musician but you've got to find your own way of hearing these. You want to drill one, four, and five and really get the hang of how that sounds. So for example, I could do one, then five, we kind of want to hear it go somewhere else. Six is sort of sad. Four, a little bit peaceful, but not quite over, back to one. And that's just one chord progression right there. That was one, five, six, four. I could play you hundreds of songs, literally hundreds, that use one, five, six, four. And the more you play around with it, the more you start to hear what they sound like and the better you are at hearing them in other people's songs. Now, one last thing I should mention before we go on to the next section is that different genres are gonna use different instruments. It's not always gonna be piano. So with rock, you're gonna have a lot of guitars. With EDM, you're gonna have synths. But the good news is the chords are still gonna have the same sort of emotional qualities to them. So for example, I've got my guitar here. If I do one, it still sounds like my home bass. Six, it's still a little bit sadder. And then the four chord sounds kind of peaceful, kind of happy. And then five, a little bit dissonant, right? So all of the things we just talked about are still at play and you can still use them. But I just wanted to make a note of that, that don't get thrown off if you go and listen to a folk song and there's guitar and you're like, crap, I've only trained this on piano. Well, the good news is it does work across any different kind of instrument. Now, another trick you can use is aside from thinking about the emotional sound of each chord, sometimes that's not as obvious, especially if the chords are happening faster, is try to hum the bass line. Okay, if you can hum the lowest bass note of each chord, then you know what your chords are. So that's another way of approaching it here. Let's listen to a little bit of uh, With or Without You by U2. So we're going to hear some bass. Alright, so I'm trying to hum those lower notes. I'm not trying to hum all the guitar melodies and whatnot. I'm just listening for the bass. Because if I can hum those bass notes, then I can pick them out on the piano. It's sort of like finding a melody, but lower down. And then from there, what I can do is build each of those root notes into a full chord. So let me show you what I mean. The first chord I heard was... Dum there we go. So that is going to be a D chord, then dum, da, da, dum, that's A, and then up to here, which would be B, then this one, which is four. Now, I already knew this song, so I'm going really fast, but the point is, if I know that's my bass line, all I have to do is turn each one of those into full chords, and I've got my entire song. More on chords and scales later, I promise, it's coming up. This method works really well for some people, but for others, they end up humming the melody and they can't stop themselves from gravitating towards the high stuff. And so those people it's not as useful for. But yeah, I just wanted to sort of mention that as another way that you can approach finding the chords. And everybody's gonna have a different way of doing it. Some people like listening to the emotional components, some people like humming it. You're gonna have to sort of find your own style, but this is every way I can think of to attack those chord progressions and to get you hearing them. Okay, we've talked about the seven melody notes, we've talked about the seven chords, but at this point you might notice, if you're really observant or you know about music theory, that there's a huge problem that we haven't covered yet. And I put problem in the scare quotes because it's not actually an issue, but basically everything we've done to this point has been in the key of C, right? So it's been using the C scale. And the thing is, there's other scales out there. There's D major and G major and F sharp. 
all these other scales. But the good news, here's what's awesome. Everything that we've learned applies to all of those other scales in the exact same way. All we have to do is figure out what specific scale a song is using. And let me illustrate what I'm talking about a little bit. So basically, what I'm trying to say is Do, Re, Mi is going to sound the same regardless of what scale you're using. The one chord is going to sound like your home bass. The sixth chord is going to sound sad, no matter what scale you're using. Everything we talked about still applies. So let me prove that to you. Let's say I'm trying to sing Journey, okay? And I'm trying to do Don't Stop Believing. Just a small town girl! Okay, that's really high. <laughs> I'm not Steve Perry. So let's lower that down and let's change keys, okay? So let's say I'm moving it from the key of E, the original scale, and now I'm gonna move it down like six notes. Let's do the key of G. And watch this. It's still gonna sound like Don't Stop Believing. She's just a small town girl Living in a lonely world Something like that. But why did that still sound like Don't Stop Believing? I changed every melody note, I changed every chord. Why doesn't it sound like a totally different song? Well, the reason is our ear, unless you have perfect pitch, doesn't super care about what scale a song is using. And it cares way more about the relationships between the notes. We call this relative pitch. So even if you don't have perfect pitch, which I don't have, I can't just listen to a note and say, well, that's an F sharp. Even if you don't have that, you can hear the Do, Re, Mi. So you can hear the one chord, the four chord. You can hear all the music theory underneath it and then go apply it on the piano or the guitar or whatever your instrument is. All right, now I know that's a little weird to wrap your head around. So let's do one more thing here that I think is going to make it make sense for you. We're going to listen to a little bit of Ed Sheeran real quick. Now, I don't have perfect pitch, so if I just heard that, I have no idea like what exact key this is in. But I do know that I heard, I'm on my way, do, re, mi, mi. I know that's do, re, mi, mi. So all I have to do is go to the piano and figure out what scale Ed Sheeran's using for this song. Is it in the C scale, the D scale? That's the part that we have to figure out. But let's see, so, no, there we go. There's Do, I'm on my way. So now I can take everything I just heard and I can play the song. So I listened to it, I figured out what the melody was doing, and then I just plugged it in, I mapped it out to the key that the song is in. In this case, the key of D. Now that begs the question, well, how do we figure out the key of our song? Maybe I can hear Do, Re, Mi, maybe I can hear the one chord, but how on earth do I figure out what scale the song is in? Well, the answer is really easy. All we're gonna try to do is find the root note, the home bass note. And what I do is I tell my students to just try and hum it. Let it come from your voice, let it come from your ear. Don't try to just noodle around on a piano or a guitar. So let's pick another song, for example. Let's say we're listening to Fun. Okay, so I'm gonna try and hum. So it took me a second there. That song's in the key of F. So there's a little bit of that guesswork in just trying to figure out where that home note is. And there's actually a way to check if you've got the right note for your key. So what some people will do is they'll hum a note that's in the scale, but maybe it's not the root note. Maybe it's so, right? Like, do, re, mi, fa, so, and you're humming that, and that's not quite the root note. But there's a way to check to make sure you're actually on the root, and it's called the pivot test. So what you want to do is pivot down, do, ti, do, down a half step, do, ti, do, and it should still sound good as you listen to your song. So that sounds fine. Do, ti, do. But let's say I was humming the wrong note. Let's say I thought it was in the key of C. Mm. Okay, it's still part of the scale. Maybe I think that's it. But then I try the pivot test. Oh gosh, you can just hear it's such a wrong note against what's happening. And one last way you could do it is you could just Google it, right? You could type in what key is the song Carry On By Fun in. I'm not as much a fan of that way of doing it because it relies on Google, right? It relies on the internet. 
And sometimes, you know, other people are wrong, they make mistakes, there's bad guitar tabs. There's just this whole other world out there that you don't need if you can sit down and just listen to it and know where you're going. And what's cool about that is once we find our home note, once we find Do, that tells us what scale the song is using. So in this case, we found that the song's in the key of F, F is Do, or 1, and then we use our scale formula to figure out the rest of the scale. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Then from there, our melody is going to exist within that framework. We're going to have that B flat that we just saw. So as we guess, we want to remember that. And even more importantly, the chords are also going to have that B flat. Watch this. F is now 1, okay? So that's the 1 chord. As I go to 2, I have to remember the B flat. So it's the same shape, it's still every other note, but I have to remember my scale has B flat in it. Then I can go to the 3 chord, then the 4 chord, I have that B flat again. So in other words, just remember your scale for both the melody and for your chords. Okay, this is gonna be really cool. Let's do a live example of how to put this all together because I think it's helpful not just to learn about it, but to see how it's actually done, what it looks like. So, I pulled up a random Taylor Swift song. It's off the Evermore album, because I'm not as familiar with that. I think I listened to it once when it first came out. But uh, yeah, let's check this out. Okay, so right there, the one chord. Fa, mi, re, do. There's the four chord. Now, I don't know what key it's in, right? I don't know if it's in the key of D, or G, or A. I really don't know, so I'm going to have to go to the piano because I don't have perfect pitch and figure out the scale. Cool, the melody just matches that. Fa, mi, re, do. I can hear the one chord, I can hear the four chord. Those are the two chords we're switching back and forth with, one and four. And I can hear the melody, fa, mi, re, do, fa, mi, re, do, but I don't know what key I'm in. So I'm going to go to the piano. There we go, it took two seconds. I tried C, that wasn't quite it, and I, and I went up to C sharp here, and that's the key we're in. Do, re, mi, re, do, do, ti, do. All right, so I'm locked in there. Now what I can do is I can go one chord. Fa, mi, re, do, fa, mi, re, do, fa, do, on the four chord there, fa, do. Okay, so it looks easy, right? Once you've trained all this, it's all happening up here. You've learned the melody, you've learned the way the chords sound, then you just apply it to a certain scale. Looks easy, but it does take work and it does take time to train that. I didn't hold anything back, right? I'm not leaving out some big secret, but of course we need a little bit more guidance for most people to actually take them from point A to point B and get them applying all this. So if you want to learn a little bit more from me, you can check out my whole Piano by Ear course, which takes you step by step through exactly how to do this stuff. And in the course, we go so much more in depth on everything that we've talked about today. I get way more into the music theory with the different chords and scales. I show you not just the melodies like we did today, but we have audio exercises, we have interactive things where you're naming certain things. And then at the end, we have a whole module on how to put it together. The timing between the melody and the chords, we didn't really cover that today. There's so much more to dig into in the full course that I really hope if you're interested in this stuff, you give it a chance and you check it out. And you can do that using the link below, either in the comments or in the description. All right, so I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it blew your mind and just opened the gates and showed you exactly how this is done and that you take this stuff and you apply it and give yourself an awesome skill that you get to keep for life. Until next time, this is Corey Lennox. See ya.